Thief and Thief subclasses. If you are breaking in into a building in town, be sure to left click on the door beforehand to get an idea of your odds of picking the lock. There is a chance of failing even, even if you get uh, this lock is an insult to your abilities and a chance of succeeding where it's light. If you get uh, it would be a miracle if you pick this lock. Invest in invisibility potions because you are going to be caught often at low levels by the city guards and you are not going to be able to defeat them. If you are a Nightblade, make don't buy an invisibility spell. It will be cheaper for you to buy and cast than it uh, is for any other character. Speaking of turning invisible, make sure your enemies aren't blocking the only way out of, of a place before you turn yourself invisible. The typical reaction of someone when their prey turns invisible is to hold the ground and wait for him or her, or her to reappear, so you're stuck. Exception. If you create a spell wherein you're des designated Designated. Right. Somewhat like this. <laughs> As a non target, by, uh, but uh, can cast other spells, making uh, it more expensive. You can turn invi invisible, not be attacked, and whack away at your enemy without fear of re retaliation. That is, until the spells. until the spell wear wears off. Ah, something is wrong with my eyes. Ah. It's so blurry. <laughs> One great thing about uh, Thief and Thief subclasses is your chance for critical strike. Starting around level 5, you can start assuming you'll get at least one critical strike. Triple damage in nearly every encounter. At top levels, you're a little. Especially if you're an assassin. On leveling, invest primarily in agility and intelligence for thieves. If you're an acrobat, invest in strength, as it uh, will increase your already phenomenal jumping abilities. Kajitsi, Agonians, and Wood Elves make the best thieves all around. Other races are possible also. For example, Red Guards and Nords can make decent assassins and rogues, and Dark Elves are well suited for Nightblades. Major warrior classes usually go to places like taverns, majors guilds, and equipment stores to do a little honest negotiation. Um, thieves know nothing is a better bargain than free goodies. The only way to test one's ability to steal is to try it out and obviously suffer the consequences if you fail. The odds of stealing vary were I pretty widely from store to inn to guild, but there is a certain advice that's universal. In a major's guild, it's easier to steal a potion than a magic artifact, simply because the artifacts are under stronger civilians. If you will, if you are still bound, bound, and uh, determined, determined to try and get a crystal or fireballs, have a spell or potion on. Of invisibility ready and maybe a, a password spell in case the guards uh, try to block uh, your way. Mage and warrior types won't consider the risk worthwhile, but for a thief type, there is no greater feeling than getting away with it. Thief types don't wear much armor, and their sneaky trait forbids the use of anything heavy that clanks a lot. This is not to say you have to be helpless if you are caught by vengeful trolls or overzealous city guards. Simply be on the lookout for magic items that uh, reduce your armor class. 
Whether they are mugs, crystals, braces or rings, you'll know what you have by click right-clicking on it. Once it is uh, in inventory, you'll be taught immediately what the item does to your armor class. If you get uh, the item identified at a major skills, you only be told that you have an elven amulet or adamantium braces, but you already know what it what it does. So don't waste your money. A unique artifact to be on the lookout for is the Necromancer's Amulet. It does a couple of major things, but most importantly, it has the same armor class as plate mail without class restrictions. A couple of other artifacts offer nearly as much protection, but the Necromancer's Amulet is the best. Speaking of artifacts, Thief types will also like uh, the ring of Khajiit, uh, which is super for invisible sneaking. The skeleton's key, which can open any normal lock and quite a few magic locks one time a day. And King's uh, and King o Ognum Oakum Coffer, which has uh, an endless supply of gold. Something no real thief can resist. Just keep asking people on the streets for general rumors, especially as you reach higher levels. A much asked question, what character class is that less in uh, straight hand-to-hand -hand combat? Three possibilities. The ranger who gets uh, to add his or her level to the amount of damage delivered to non-undead creatures, the assassin, who can use any weapon and has a, an excellent chance of delivering critical strike, uh, three times damage. After critical strike and the monk, who also has a good chance of scoring critical strikes and has a low chance of being hit at upper levels. Opinion is divided, so play them all and tell us what you think. Oh, another one. Chapter Wilderness There is a huge wilderness outside of every town in Arena. Yet exploring the wilderness is not necessary to win the game. But no character should pass up a chance to check out the random dungeons and other interesting places tucked away in the wilderness. There are few other places that any character of any level can venture and always find something new. A ruined ma mausoleum, a farming community, and an unexplored cave, a, bustr a bustling subur suburb, an abandoned tower, a squire's country estate. It is a dangerous area, even in daylight but uh, the rewards for exploration are enormous. As you may have suspected, risk and reward go hand in hand. The more dangerous the area, the greater the reward. Expect the island crypt of a leash to have more su su sumptuous cre treasures than uh, the hovel of some uslap. Believe it or not, the wilderness actually have a lower chance of nighttime random encounters that than cities do. Brigands and wandering monsters consider cities to, to be open coffers at night, while the riches of the wilderness are more spread out. If you arrive at an unfamiliar town late in late in night and you cannot see or ask for the nearest inn's location, Sleep outside the city gates and rest out in the open. If you arrive in a city on the evening of Tales and Tolos or the Witches' Festival, run to an inn or out the city gates as quickly as possible. They are so-called evil knights, when monsters of all descriptions, especially the undead, walk the city streets. You may still get encounters in the wilderness, but in the city, 
we guarantee it. Cities and dungeons certainly have their grandeur, but to see the world, world of Tamriel in all its variety, one has to see the wilderness. See a spectacular sunset in the Hammerfell desert, one of the infamous black marsh thunderstorms crashing through lush rainforests. A quiet morning in Skyrim after a late night winter frost. Shoo! Oh fuck. Sorry. <laughs> uh, where I was? Shoo, you could go through the entire game without looking at any of this. As you could in real life, but uh, would you want to? Hints and tips for exploring the wilderness. Check your auto map often. It's easy to miss communities and creeps if you are hacking through, hacking through the underbrush. But your auto map will show you where they are. If you want to go back to the closest city, click it on the provincial map. You'll be back inside the city gates in no time. Many a wilderness explorer has has sworn he or she walked five walked five hundred late uh, paces, paces north of the city gates and five hundred paces south south and uh, there wasn't a city in sight. They don't call it wilderness for nothing. When you get to water, check your auto map. Many a dungeon, crypt or other place meant to be out of the way is located on a tiny island in the center of a lake. Also, if uh, you get to some water you wish to cross and there isn't a bridge nearby, look for boats. They are found uh, right off the shoreline, often hidden by rushes. Click on the boat and you can travel great distances without tiring as you would swim in. When you wish to leave the boat, please press J and you'll anchor and jump from the boat. If you want it later, it will be there, it, it will be where you left it. If you are looking for a dungeon, crypt or tower, the best method is to check your auto map from time to time and look for a red dot. If it's if it is by itself, you found the dungeon. If it <coughs> so where I was, <laughs> uh, Ottawa only through the through the investigation will show if there. Are isn't anything red on your map? Try asking one of the rustics. They are used to adventurers, and most can uh, name the closest dungeon in miles. If there are no people near you, start walking towards uh, the nearest community on your auto map. Oh, next chapter: special notes for certain monsters. Snow Wolf. Although they are considered fairly low level monsters. Fourth level. When you're surrounded by a group of these beasts and they are blasting you with frost spell after frost spell, you better hope for some extra protection. Like with uh, many spell casting monsters, one good defense is a spell reflection. With any luck, They'll damage themselves, so you won't have to touch them. If you don't have any means to reflect spells, get as close to the beasts as fast as you can. They do less damage at close quarters, especially if you have a potion or two of resistance to cold, or are a member of the Nord race, which uh, are naturally resistant to cold, in your inventory. In your inventory. Snow wolves are uh, have anywhere 
between 15 and 30 health points. So a couple good swipes with your best sword should take care of them. Wait. Spider. If you don't have any potions or spells of resist poison, Q poison, or Q uh, paralyzation called free action, or are uh, not a high elf or a knight, both of whom are immune to poison, you are best of approaching these beasts at a distance. The chance of uh, contracting a paralyzing poison is not great. 15% at most, but it's hardly ever convenient when it does happen. Uh, bow and arrow or targeted magic spells are best to take out these arachnids. So for today I think I can finish. Thank you for attention. Goodbye!